Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the carol service here at Pease Down St. John Methodist Church. Uh, it will be shortly carols by candlelight. Um, and before we get started, just a few housekeeping uh, notices. Um, it's good to see you all wearing your face coverings. It's a shame you're all wearing your face coverings, but that's where we are. So please keep them on um, throughout the, the service, uh, even for singing and uh, when you're moving around, all that sort of thing. At the end of the service, as you leave, um, we would have hoped to be having coffee and mince pies here, but uh, in order to, again, minimize risk, we're going to send you away with a mince pie in your hand. Okay, so um, there will be stewards um, at, at the door there, um, and I think we'll probably use this door as well into the school hall, and you can go both ways and uh, collect your mince pie on your way out. We're also, over Christmas, we uh, take up offerings for uh, different charities. Tonight, uh, we're taking up an offering for Julian House, um, and uh, especially thinking of those who are uh, homeless and those who are working on their behalf. So if you'd like to give to that, again, as you leave, uh, there'll be stewards stood with a, a basket for you to throw your uh, £10 notes into, and um, uh, whatever you can give, uh, to help Julian House will be greatly received at this time. The service will be um, uh, continuing uh, sort of unannounced after I've finished. Um, so as each carol uh, begins, uh, if you're feeling fit enough and strong enough, stand up and sing. All the words will be on the screens. And then uh, those of you who are reading, uh, simply come forward and uh, give your reading at the allotted time. I think that's all I need to say. Anything I've forgotten, Claire? Can you think of? No, good. So we're going to uh, turn all the lights out to begin with. Uh, so everything will be dark for a short while um, as we welcome the light of Christ into our midst. So can we have the lights off here as well, please? Thank you. Thanks, Nick.
Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will certainly not die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food, and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. To the woman he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam, he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return.
reading is Isaiah 9, verses 2 to 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you, as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as is in the day of maiden's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Reading is from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 9. 
A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness, he will judge the needy. With justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together. And a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. is taken from Micah chapter 5 verses 2 to 4. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned 
until the time when she who is in labor bears a son and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. This reading is taken from Luke 2, verses 1 to 7. In these days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Cyrenia, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, to the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth, for, she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room available for them.
This reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. <clears throat> and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will, be, that will cause great joy for all of the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to the God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those who, on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which was just as they had been told. Just before we have our final reading and, and final carol tonight, um, thank you to all those who've uh, taken part in this service, for uh, the readers, uh, Ruth for playing for us and all the uh, technical team for uh, making sure everything was on the screen properly and the sound was working and all that sort of thing. So thank you to all of those. Thank you to everybody for coming along tonight as well and uh, lifting your voices in song uh, it's good to sing these carols, isn't it? We only get uh, a small opportunity to do it, and we missed doing it last year in the building. 
Um, if you were on the light trail this year and last year, you may have sung one or two of them with us in the cold in the car park or on the street. Uh, and it's good to do that as well. I heard something very interesting uh, this week. In fact, it was Ruth who told me this interesting thing. That um, I'm always looking for a new way of viewing the Christmas story. And the new way that uh, Ruth shared with me was this. There's lots of angels in this story, which I think is brilliant. And they always appear and say, don't be afraid to people who are quivering in terror, which uh, amuses me. But God comes and he says, don't be afraid. Hear that message this Christmas time, don't be afraid. But the interesting thing is this, the angels are sent to people, to Mary, to Joseph, uh, to the shepherds. But who sends them? Well, ultimately, of course, we'd say God sends them. But who is God? Jesus is God. Jesus is the Son of God. He is one with the Father and the Holy Spirit. And so actually it is Jesus who says to the angel Gabriel, go to this young woman in this town called Nazareth, this young woman who isn't yet married, and tell her that she's about to have a baby. And that it's not just any baby, this is going to be the Son of God, the Savior of the world, and you to call him Jesus. And when you go and tell her this, Be gentle with her, because she's going to be my mother. Isn't that an extraordinary thought? And then the, Jesus sends the, the angels to the shepherds. And the message that he sends with, them, with the angels is that he has been born. The Savior who is Christ the Lord, this day has been born. He's saying to the shepherds, I've here the one that you've been waiting for, the one that you've been longing for, the Savior that you've been desperate for, for centuries, is here. I'm here. Come and find me. Come and see me. And Jesus is still sending that same message today. It might be by angels. It might just be through these songs that we've been singing. It might be by the stories that we've been reading. It might simply be through my words that I'm speaking tonight. Jesus is sending the same message to all of us today. Come and find me. It's not difficult. I'll tell you where I am, exactly where I am. And he says, come and find me. And just picture in your mind's eye those shepherds going into that stable. You know when you, you, you come across a, a newborn baby and you meet them for the first time or maybe even each time you meet them. I bet everybody does this. I know I do. I place a, a finger for them to grip hold of. And they always do, don't they? A tiny baby always grips hold of a finger. Can you imagine those shepherds doing the same thing? I can. They come into the stable. They see this newborn baby. And one of the shepherds holds his hand out. And the baby, who is Christ the Lord, grabs hold of his finger. You be the shepherd for a moment. You be the shepherd and hold out your finger and feel the saviour of the world grab hold of it tight. That same hand that is nailed to the cross is the hand that holds you now. That same hand that is nailed to the cross so that the power of sin and death 
is broken for you. Your sins are forgiven. You're, you're set free. That is the hand that grips your finger right now. And that's a wonderful, wonderful thought. That even a few hours old, even a few seconds old, this child is already saving you if you will only come and find him. And many of us, I guess, in these last few days and weeks and months and it's been going on nearly two years now in this darkness that seems to cover all the earth i've probably felt the need of a savior well he's here he is lord of all the earth he'll be your lord he'll be your savior he will hold on to you forever Come and find him, because he's the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome him. Let's hear from John's Gospel. John, sir, <coughs> John reads, In the beginning... We heard Genesis. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life and that life was the light of all mankind the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it there was a man sent from god whose name was john he came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world didn't recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born, not of natural descent, nor of human decision or husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth and willing to hold our finger. On Christmas Eve, we have uh, two services here, and uh, one is at 4.30, our crib service with Chris Stingles. Um, it's obviously aimed mainly at children, uh, but you don't have to be a child to come. If you just fancy being childlike on Christmas Eve, come at 4.30 and join in that service. Um, if you're still up and awake at 11.30 at night, uh, we'll have our communion service and um, uh, that will go just past midnight. So come and see Christmas Day in with us as we celebrate the Saviour's birth. 
And then on Christmas morning, 10.30, we have a, a family celebration service here. Uh, it usually lasts around about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, something like that. Um, so if Father Christmas has been to you then, come and bring whatever he's uh, brought you. Somebody actually brought a puppy one year, but I won't go that far. But come and bring whatever he's brought you, and uh, then you can show everybody um, what, uh, how lucky you've been, or how good you've been, I suppose. Also, um, tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, uh, Andy is hosting in the meeting place an Advent reflection. So if you're an early bird, get along to the meeting place. Are there coffee and mince pies? And that's a coffee and mince pies, okay? What more could you ask for? Let's join together in singing our closing carol. Oh, come, all you faithful. Now may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.